Maurice Latin, Flavius Mauricius Tiberius Augustus, Greek, Flabios Mauricios Tiberios Augustos 539 27th of November 602 was Byzantine emperor from 582 to 602. A prominent general, Maurice fought with success against the Sasanian Empire. After he became emperor, he brought the war with Sasanian Persia to a victorious conclusion. Under him the empire's eastern border in the Caucasus was vastly expanded and, for the first time in nearly two centuries, the Romans were no longer obliged to pay the Persians thousands of pounds of gold annually for peace. Maurice campaigned extensively in the Balkans against the Avars, pushing them back across the Danube by 599. He also conducted campaigns across the Danube, the first Roman emperor to do so in over two centuries. In the west, he established two large semi-autonomous provinces called exarchates, ruled by exarchs, or viceroys of the emperor. In Italy Maurice established the Exarchate of Italy in 584, the first real effort by the empire to halt the advance of the Lombards. With the creation of the Exarchate of Africa in 590 he further solidified the power of Constantinople in the western Mediterranean. His reign was troubled by financial difficulties and almost constant warfare. In 602 a dissatisfied general named Phocas usurped the throne, having Maurice and his six sons executed. This event would prove a disaster for the empire, sparking a 26-year war with Sassanid Persia which would leave both empires devastated prior to the Muslim conquests. His reign is a relatively well-documented era of late antiquity, in particular by the historian Theophylact Simicata. The Strategicon, a manual of war which influenced European and Middle Eastern military traditions for well over a millennium, is traditionally attributed to Maurice. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins and early life Maurice was born in Arabisus in Cappadocia in 539, the son of a certain Paul. He had one brother, Peter, and two sisters, Theoctista and Gordia, who was later the wife of the general Philippicus. He is recorded to have been a native Greek speaker, unlike the previous emperors since Anastasius I to Chorus. Sources conflict over his birthplace, with some calling him a Cappadocian Greek, others a Hellenized Armenian. The historian Evagrius Scholasticus records a descent from Old Rome. Maurice first came to Constantinople as a notarius to serve as a secretary to the Cum's Excubitorum, commander of the Excubitors, the imperial bodyguard, Tiberius, the future Tiberius II, r. 578 582. When Tiberius was named Caesar in 574, Maurice was appointed to succeed him as comes excubitorum. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Persian War and Accession to the Throne. In late 577, despite a complete lack of military experience, Maurice was named as Magister Militum per Orientum, effectively commander in chief of the Byzantine army in the east. He succeeded General Justinian in the ongoing war against Sassanid Persia. At about the same time he was raised to the rank of Patricios, the empire's senior honorific title, which was limited to a small number of holders. In 578, a truce in Mesopotamia came to an end and the main focus of the war shifted to that front. After Persian raids in Mesopotamia, the new Magister Militum of the East mounted attacks on both sides of the Tigris, captured the fortress of Afuman and sacked Singara. Sassanid Emperor Khosrau sought peace in 579, but died before an agreement could be reached and his successor Hormuzd IV r. 579 broke off the negotiations. In 580, Byzantium's Arab allies the Ghassanids scored a victory over the Lakhmids, Arab allies of the Sassanids, while Byzantine raids again penetrated east of the Tigris. Around this time the future Khosrau II was put in charge of the situation in Armenia, where he succeeded in convincing most of the rebel leaders to return to Sassanid allegiance, although Iberia remained loyal to the Byzantines. The following year an ambitious campaign by Maurice, supported by Ghassanid forces under Al-Mundir III, targeted Cte Siphon, the Sassanid capital. The combined force moved south along the river Euphrates accompanied by a fleet of ships. The army stormed the fortress of Anatha and moved on until it reached the region of Beth Aramai in central Mesopotamia, near Cte Siphon. There they found the bridge over the Euphrates destroyed by the Persians. In response to Maurice's advance Sassanid general Adermaean was ordered to operate in northern Mesopotamia, threatening the Roman army's supply line. 
Adermayan pillaged Azrain, and was successful in capturing its capital, Edessa. He then marched his army toward Kalinicum on the Euphrates. With the possibility of a march to Cte Siphon Gon Maurice was forced to retreat. The retreat was arduous for the tired army, and Maurice and Almundir exchanged recriminations for the expedition's failure. However, they cooperated in forcing Adermayan to withdraw, and defeated him at Kalinicum. The mutual recriminations were not laid to rest by this. Despite his successes, Mundir was accused by Maurice of treason during the preceding campaign. Maurice claimed that Mundir had revealed the Byzantine plan to the Persians, who then proceeded to destroy the bridge over the Euphrates. The chronicler John of Ephesus explicitly calls this assertion a lie, as the Byzantine intentions must have been plain to the Persian commanders. Both Maurice and Mundir wrote letters to Emperor Tiberius, who tried to reconcile them. Maurice visited Constantinople himself, where he was able to persuade Tiberius of Mundir's guilt. The charge of treason is almost universally dismissed by modern historians. Irfan Shahid says that it probably had more to do with Maurice's dislike of the veteran and militarily successful Arab ruler. This was compounded by the Byzantines' habitual distrust of the barbarian and supposedly innately traitorous Arabs, as well as by Mundir's staunchly Monophysite faith. Al Mundir was arrested the following year on suspicion of treachery, triggering war between Byzantines and Ghassanids and marking the beginning of the end of the Ghassanid kingdom. In June of 582, Maurice scored a decisive victory against Adermayan near Constantina. Adermayan barely escaped the field, while his co commander Tamkosrau was killed. In the same month, Emperor Tiberius was struck down by an illness which shortly thereafter killed him. In this state Tiberius initially named two heirs, each of whom was to marry one of his daughters. Maurice was betrothed to Constantina, and Germanus, related through blood to the great emperor Justinian, was married to Charito. It appears that the plan was to divide the empire in two, with Maurice receiving the eastern provinces and Germanus the western. According to John of Nikiu, Germanus was Tiberius' favored candidate for the throne but declined out of humility. On 13 August Tiberius was on his deathbed and civilian, military and ecclesiastical dignitaries awaited the appointment of his successor. Tiberius had reportedly prepared a speech on the matter but at this point was too weak to speak. The quaestor Sacri Palati the senior judicial official of the empire read it for him. The speech proclaimed Maurice and Augustus and sole successor to the throne. On 14 August 582 Tiberius died and his last words were spoken to his successor. Let my sovereignty be delivered to thee with this girl. Be happy in the use of it, mindful always to love equity and justice. Maurice became sole emperor, marrying Constantina in the autumn. Shortly after his ascension the advantage he had gained at the Battle of Constantina was lost when his successor as Magister Militum of the East, John Mystacon, was defeated at the river Nymphios by Cardarigan. The situation was difficult, Maurice ruled a bankrupt empire, it was at war with Persia, he was paying extremely high tribute to the Avars, 80,000 gold solidi a year, and the Balkan provinces were being thoroughly devastated by the Slavs. Maurice had to continue the war against the Persians. In 586 his troops defeated them at the Battle of Solachan south of Dara, in 588, a mutiny by unpaid Byzantine troops against their new commander, Priscus, seemed to offer the Sassanids a chance for a breakthrough, but the mutineers themselves repulsed the ensuing Persian offensive. Later in the year they secured a major victory before Martyropolis. The Sassanid commander, Marusas was killed, several of the Persian leaders were captured along with 3,000 other prisoners, and only a thousand men survived to reach refuge at Nisibis. The Byzantines secured much booty, including the Persian battle standards, and sent them, along with Marusas' head, to Maurice in Constantinople. In 592 Parthian brothers Vistam and Vindaya overthrew King Hormuz IV and made the latter's son, Prince Khosrau II the new king. The former Persian commander-in-chief Bahram Chobin, who had rebelled against Hormuz IV, claimed the throne for himself and defeated Khosrau. Khazrau and the two Parthians fled to the Byzantine court. Although the Senate unanimously advised against it, Maurice helped Khosrau regain his throne with an army of 35,000 men. In 591 the combined Byzantine-Persian army under generals John Mystakhan and Narzas defeated Bahram Chobin's forces near Ganzik at the Battle of Blarathon. The victory was decisive. Maurice finally brought the war to a successful conclusion with the reaccession of Khosrau. Subsequently, Khosrau was probably adopted by the emperor. 
He rewarded Maurice by ceding to the Empire Western Armenia up to the lakes Van and Seven, including the large cities of Martyropolis, Tigranokert, Manzikert, Ani, and Yerevan. Maurice's treaty brought a new status quo to the east territorially. Byzantium was enlarged to an extent never before achieved by the empire. During the new, perpetual peace, millions of Solidi were saved by the remission of tribute to the Persians. <laughs> Balkan War The Avars arrived in the Carpathian Basin in 568. Almost immediately they launched an attack on Sirmium, the keystone to the Byzantine defences on the Danube but were repulsed. They then sent 10,000 Kotriger Huns to invade the Byzantine province of Dalmatia. There followed a period of consolidation, during which the Byzantines paid them 80,000 gold solidi a year. In 579, his treasury empty, Tiberius II stopped the payments. The Avars retaliated with another siege of Sirmium. The city fell in c. 581, or possibly 582. After the capture of Sirmium, the Avars demanded 100,000 solidi a year. Refused, they used the strategically important city as a base of operations against several poorly defended forts along the Danube and began pillaging the northern and eastern Balkans. The Slavs began settling the land from the 580s on. In 584 the Slavs threatened the capital and in 586 the Avars besieged Thessalonica, while the Slavs went as far as the Peloponnese. After his victory on the eastern frontier in 591, Maurice was free to focus on the Balkans. He launched several campaigns against the Slavs and Avars. In 592 his troops retook Singidunum modern Belgrade from the Avars. His commander-in-chief Priscus defeated the Slavs, Avars and Gepids south of the Danube in 593. The same year he crossed the Danube into modern-day Wallachia to continue his series of victories. In 594 Maurice replaced Priscus with his rather inexperienced brother Peter, who despite initial failures, scored another victory in Wallachia. Priscus, now in command of another army further upstream, defeated the Avars again in 595. The latter now only dared to attack peripherally, in Dalmatia two years later. In the same year the Byzantines concluded a peace treaty with the Avar leader Bayan I, which allowed the Byzantines to send expeditions into Wallachia. In 598 Maurice broke the treaty to permit a retaliation campaign inside the Avar homeland. In 599 and 601 the Byzantine forces wreaked havoc amongst the Avars and Gepids. In 602 the Slavs suffered a crushing defeat in Wallachia. The Byzantine troops were now able to hold the Danube line again. Meanwhile, Maurice was making plans for repopulating devastated areas in the Balkans by using Armenian settlers. Maurice also planned to lead further campaigns against the Avar Khaganate, so as to either destroy them or force them into submission. <laughs> Domestic policy. In the west Maurice organized the threatened Byzantine dominions in Italy into the Exarchate of Italy. The late Roman administrative system provided for a clear distinction between civil and military offices, primarily to lessen the possibility of rebellion by over-powerful provincial governors. In 584 Maurice created the office of Exarch, which combined the supreme civil authority of a praetorian prefect and the military authority of a magister militum and enjoyed considerable autonomy from Constantinople. The Exarchate was successful in slowing the Lombard advance in Italy. In 591, he created the Exarchate of Africa along similar lines. In 597, an ailing Maurice wrote his last will, in which he described his ideas of governing the empire. His eldest son, Theodosius, would rule the east from Constantinople, his second son, Tiberius, would rule the west from Rome. Some historians believe he intended for his younger sons to rule from Alexandria, Carthage, and Antioch. His intent was to maintain the unity of the empire, this idea bears a strong resemblance to the Tetrarchy of Diocletian. However, Maurice's violent death prevented these plans from coming to fruition. In religious matters, Maurice was tolerant towards Monophysitism, although he was a supporter of the Council of Chalcedon. He clashed with Pope Gregory I over the latter's defense of Rome against the Lombards. Maurice's efforts to consolidate the empire slowly but steadily succeeded, especially after the peace with Persia. 
His initial popularity apparently declined during his reign, mostly because of his fiscal policies. In 588 he announced a cut in military wages by a quarter leading to a serious mutiny by troops on the Persian front. He refused to pay a small ransom in 599 or 600 to free 12,000 Byzantine soldiers taken prisoner by the Avars. The prisoners were killed, and a protesting military delegation, headed by an officer named Phokas subsequently Emperor Phokas, was humiliated and rejected in Constantinople. Death In 602 Maurice, with the lack of money as always dictating policy, decreed that the army should stay for winter beyond the Danube. The exhausted troops mutinied against the emperor. Probably misjudging the situation, Maurice repeatedly ordered his troops to start a new offensive rather than return to winter quarters. His troops gained the impression that Maurice no longer understood the military situation and proclaimed Folk as their leader. They demanded that Maurice abdicate and proclaim as successor either his son Theodosius or General Germanus. Both men were accused of treason, but riots broke out in Constantinople, and the emperor left the city with his family for Nicomedia. Theodosius headed east to Persia, but historians are not sure whether he had been sent there by his father or if he fled there. Phokas entered Constantinople in November and was crowned emperor, while his troops captured Maurice and his family. Maurice was murdered on 27 November 602 some sources say 23 November. The deposed emperor was forced to watch his six sons executed before he was beheaded himself. Empress Constantina and her three daughters were spared and sent to a monastery. The Persian king Khosrau II used this coup and the murder of his patron as an excuse for a renewed war against the empire. Legacy Maurice is seen as an able emperor and commander-in-chief, though the description of him by Theophylact may exaggerate these traits. He possessed insight, public spirit, and courage. He proved his expertise on military and foreign affairs during his campaigns against the Persians, Avars and Slavs, and during peace negotiations with Khosrau II. His administrative reforms reveal him as a farsighted statesman, all the more since they outlasted his death by centuries and were the basis for the later introduction of themes as military districts. His court still used Latin, as did the army and administration, and he promoted science and the arts. Maurice is traditionally named as author of the military treatise Strategicon, which is praised in military circles as the only sophisticated combined arms theory until World War II. Some historians now believe the Strategicon is the work of his brother or another general in his court, however, his greatest weakness was his inability to judge how unpopular his decisions were. The historian C. W. Prevete Orton, listing a number of character flaws in the emperor's personality, his fault was too much faith in his own excellent judgment without regard to the disagreement and unpopularity which he provoked by decisions in themselves right and wise. He was a better judge of policy than of men. It was this flaw that cost him throne and life, and thwarted most of his efforts to prevent the disintegration of the empire of Justinian I. The death of Maurice was a turning point. The war against Persia which it caused weakened both empires, enabling the Slavs to permanently settle the Balkans and paving the way for the Arab Muslim expansion. English historian A. H. M. Jones characterizes the death of Maurice as the end of the era of classical antiquity, as the turmoil that shattered the empire over the next four decades permanently and thoroughly changed society and politics. <laughs> <laughs> Family Maurice's marriage produced nine known children. Theodosius, the 4th of August 583-585 after the 27th of November 602. According to John of Ephesus, he was the first heir born to a reigning emperor since the reign of Theodosius II, 408 to 450. He was appointed Caesar in 587 and co-emperor on the 26th of March 590. Tiberius died the 27th of November 602. Petrus died the 27th of November 602. Paulus died the 27th of November 602. Justin died the 27th of November 602. Justinian died the 27th of November 602. Anastasia died c. 605. 
Theoctista died c. 605. Cleopatra died c. 605. A daughter Miriam, Maria is recorded by the 12th century chronicler Michael the Syrian and other Eastern sources as married to Khosrau II but not in any Byzantine Greek ones. She is probably legendary. His brother Petrus c. 550-602 became the Kura Palates and was killed at the same time as Maurice. Petrus married Anastasia Aerobinda born c. 570, daughter of Ariobindus born c. 550, and had female issue. Legends The first legendary accounts of Maurice's life are recorded in the 9th century, in the work of the Byzantine historian Theophanes the Confessor. According to his chronicle Chronographia, the death of the imperial family is due to divine intervention. Christ asked the emperor to choose between a long reign or death and acceptance in the kingdom of heaven. Maurice preferred the second choice. The same story has been recorded in a short Syriac hagiography on the life of the emperor, which was sanctified later by the Eastern Orthodox Church. According to the Syriac authors, the emperor asked in prayer to receive a punishment in this world and a perfect reward in the kingdom of heaven. The choice was offered by an angel. According to another legend in the same text, Maurice prevented a nurse from substituting one of his sons so as to save at least one of the heirs of the empire. In a Montenegrin epic, the legendary prince Naid Momer, Momer the Foundling, and his sister Grazdana are related to the emperor and his sister Gordia. In the epic the epithet the foundling reflects Maurice's adoption by the emperor Tiberius, and by the imperial dynasty of Justin. In the Bosnian epic, the emperor is called Muyo Tikarovic Muyo the son of the emperor. See also List of Byzantine emperors <laughs> Notes